you ever die and get famous, that's going to be a valuable piece of paper. Yeah. I always, always say to your original. Yep. I always tell my kids I'll hang on to everything. Maybe when I'm dead, they can make some money off of me. Now my son, he wants to fake my death so we can make the money now. <laughs> what do you like that idea? All right, this is called this rag. It, it's a very highbrow poem, as you can tell. This rag. Yeah, this rag. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> my grandma worked every day of her life. She cooked two meals every day. For lunch, you can fend for yourself. Say, eat a hot dog. I have work to do, she'd say. Except for the times when she was in the hospital, she was always in the kitchen. She seldom sat down. And unless it was at her foot-powered singer sewing machine, or on her stool by the window, peeling taters, snapping beans. As she wandered around the house, her dish rag was constant in her hand. Except for the day she lost it. She tore that house apart, first blaming us for hiding it, then forcefully enlisting us to help her search, which we did, moving things, looking in all the normal places, till I opened the fridge in search of some sweet tea and found the dish rack, swathing between the Borden's evaporated milk. and a piece of foil wrapped treat. I never live, let her live that one down. I love watching a car road as pulling up on grandma's dirt driveway. Oh boy, that meant chicken was in, was about to meet its maker. Grandma let, never let anyone go hungry. Half time she didn't even let her visitors go home. Feather ticks re off the beds and the cot was made on the floor for us kids. Out of state family always went to Pearl's Knowing a soft bed and a hot meal were available for weary travelers who were always eager to eat. They were less eager to pry open those dusty pocketbooks and pay with some of that old moldy money. Grandma spent her last few years living in a nursing home, thinking my son was I. We never tried to correct her, instead bringing coffee and candy and smiles. In my mind, my grandma will always be in her kitchen, in the old house over on Brubby's Creek, pins in her hair, a rag in her hand, worrying about poor Frankie working too hard, or worrying about poor little Andy drinking too much, while grandpa snored on the couch, his work boot propped up on newspapers. Grandma was the one who told me I could write, encouraged me to draw, encouraged me to explore the world in my mind, a world far beyond our little home in the mountains. And when I write about this wondrous world in which we live, I find myself back in Grandma's kitchen, helping her look for that dish rag, all the while knowing it's in the fridge. Some of y'all heard this one before, but we'll do it again. This is called Family Portrait. I try to smile for the camera. It is a family portrait that we will send to my brother. My wife is holding our daughter, Melanie, who is all smiles and giggles as all 11 month olds are. I hold up two and a half year old Christine, who chews on her fingers to ease the teething pain. My eldest son, Jacob, wears a faded suit jacket. His brother, Timmy, wears the vest. Johnny has his coat on. He's always cold. My wife asks me to remove my cap. I leave it on, as I always do. I am ashamed that our house is in the picture. Again, my wife insisted she is proud of it. It has three rooms, a tar paper roof, and no running water. It is a far cry from our former house in town. It was two stories, white and modern. The coal mines closed in 99. We had to move out of the company house. Good paying jobs in this area, far and few between. My unemployment ran out in 2002. 2003, they came and took my truck. There's no way to farm on this steep hillside. 
I have nine kids and a wife to support. We get by on $580 a month. The light at the end of the tunnel has gone out. My wife cries when she says her prayers at night. I try to smile for the camera. It is a family portrait that we will send to my brother. titled A Man in Thought. I sit here every day, my coffee cup in my hands, just trying to think. My arms covered in a sweater, even though it is sunny on my porch. My frail limbs hold no heat. They shake when I drink my coffee. I lower my head, resting it on my hand, just trying to think. I remember the Great Depression. I remember my brother coming home from World War II, minus his arm. I remember my eldest son, Bert, standing tall, diving off the falls into Hills Creek. I remember my sweet daughter, Marie's wedding, white lace and chiffon, hair breadths and bows. She was as beautiful as a spring morning in the mountains. Yet I sit here every day, my coffee cup in my shaky hands, my arms covered with a sweater, just trying to think. What is my name? <laughs> Some things I can't remember to save my soul, so I sit here every day, just trying to think. All right, I'm gonna do 